السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, Today insha'Allah we will be starting with uh, uh, um, we will be continuing the uh, tafsir of Surah Al-Naba and uh, we reached ayah 31st and uh, we uh, ha uh, just to give an idea about what happened earlier that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has talked about Jahannam and what will happen in uh, for what is the punishment for those who transgressed and how long they are going to stay there uh, what they are going to be offered there and Allah emphasized that verily they, uh, what they did is what they are going to get. So there is all type of just in there. There is no zulm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has talked fully about the non-believers. Now inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always in the Quran does not leave it in a way that he talks only about uh, hellfire and the punishment. He, he cares about our hearts. So when he talked about the hellfire, when he talked about the punishment, when he talked about the non-believers, he followed it by talking about the righteous people, about the reward of the righteous people. So he said, so verily, for righteous people, there is success. So to see the punishment is a punishment by itself. But to see the blessings that the people of Jannah are enjoying is by itself a different type of punishment for the non-believers. As we mentioned earlier, the non-believers at a certain time, at a certain point of their uh, punishment, they will be taken out of hellfire and they will be, uh, uh, they will see the righteous people. They will see the winners of what, what their reward is. And this is by itself a different type of punishment, just to see the people who are enjoying the bounties then they will get back to hellfire. So, إِنَّ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ مَفَازَ Al-Muttaqeen are those people who uh, uh, accepted what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered them. They accepted the system of Allah, His orders, the things that He uh, asked us to do the things that he asked people not to do so if we want to give an explanation of the word taqwa we say أن يجدك حيث أمرك ويفتقدك حيث نهاك. so it's a taqwa is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will find you where he ordered you to be and he will miss you where he ordered you not to be so he ordered you to be with righteous people. He ordered you to be in halaqat al-dhikr. He ordered you to be in uh, places of knowledge. He ordered you not to go to certain places. He ordered you not to do bad things. He ordered you not to do evil. So what is the word mafaza? Bulughul khayri al nafs huwa al So getting the khayr even afterwards, the khair that was promised is what is called mafaza, is something is winning. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to be away from 
hellfire is something that you have won. How? Each and every one of us is going to see the hellfire. Each one. Allah says, وَإِن مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا Everyone will see hellfire when they pass on the Sirat. But the winners are those who will avoid getting into the hellfire. So not on Nar, we see the hellfire and then we are not getting in there. So this is a, a huge blessing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we are going to get those who are righteous. المتقين. We're going to save them. But those who transgressed will stay there forever. In another verse, he said, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازَ So this is the word فَازَ. This is the word to be saved. This is the word to win. Whoever will be away from hellfire and get into Jannah, he will be of the winners. So what's in Jannah? Not an eye has ever seen. Whatever beauty you have seen in this dunya is nothing compared to what you will see in the day after. And nothing you have even heard or heard about. Nothing you can even imagine. So there will be there will be gardens, there will be vineyards. The garden means a fenced place where it's full of trees and garden and flowers and and a place which you would love to be in, which a place which you would love to go to rest. So this means privacy and something special. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give something special to everyone, something unique, a unique reward to everyone. What's wa'anaba? The word inab, a'naba, is the grapes, the vineyards. So you will say, okay, we, we have grapes, but Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 25, كُلَّمَا رُزِقُوا مِنْهَا مِنْ ثَمَرَةٍ رِزْقًا so whenever they are provided with a provision of fruit therefrom, they will say, this is what we were provided with before. This is what we had in dunya. And it's given to them in likeness only how it looks, how it has the same color, but not how it tastes. The taste is completely different. It's just the like. It's just the name that you know. So this is what they are going to have. Virgins who are equal in age. The cats. Cats and dihaqa is and a cup that that's completely filled. So the cups are always filled up. They're pure. They're always available. They are it's amazing, delicious drinks. The word katsan by itself means in Arabic when when someone is offered a cas, it means a, a cas of khamr, a cup of wine. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, there, there will be wine, but what type of wine? The type of wine that's explained there, that's, that's given the idea of it, of it they don't hear any laghu nor any lie. The word lahu is ill speech, the speech that has no value. 
And this happens when someone is drunk or when someone lost his mind. But the drink that they will be offered does not cause anyone to lose his or her mind. They don't hear any speech that hurts or that has no value. So if they don't hear it, then there is no one saying it. It's Dar es Salaam. Whatever is there, whatever is in that, that place is salim min kulli naqs, is pure, is uh, perfect. So everything is free from any shortcomings. Jaza'an min rabbika ata'an hisaba. Rewarded from you, Lord, with a sufficient gift. The word jaza'an, al-jaza, is something, is a gift, is a reward to an action that was performed earlier. The reward in the day after will be countless. So there will never, that reward will never end. That reward will never get less. So if you have something, uh, um, a bowl that's filled with gold, and you're taking from this gold and you are spending, you are taking and you are giving, at one time, that gold will finish. That gold will, will, will not be there anymore. But the bounty is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the righteous people, for the good people, for the winners in the day after, is never going to get any less. It will be there, it will be countless, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward people, and they, he will be happy with people, and they will be happy with him. Radiyallahu anhum. So, who is doing all of this? Why is the giving explained and described like this? Who is giving it? He is Rabbu Samawati Wal Ard. He is the Lord of Heavens. He is the Lord of Earth. He is the one who does everything and anything he wills without being questioned. In Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يسألوا عما يفعلوا وهم يسألون. He's not questioned about what he does, but they will be questioned. Everyone will be questioned about whatever they are doing. It's, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nobody will question him. Why did you do this? Why did you do that? He is Rabbu Samawati Wal Ardi Wama Bainahuma. He's the Lord of the heavens. He's the Lord of the earth. He is the Lord of whatever, whatsoever is in between the heaven and the earth. Ar Rahman. Ar Rahman. He is the most merciful. We talked earlier about. Ar-Rahma, about mercy. We talked about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we talked about Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We talked, we mentioned how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is to the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad, of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We talked about Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asking for mercy for his Ummah on the Day of Judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he will not harm him with his nation, with his ummah. So he is Ar-Rahman. He's the Lord of the heavens. He's the Lord of the earth. He is Ar-Rahman, the most merciful. لا يملكون منه خطابة Okay? No one, no one dare to speak before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one dares to speak before him without a permission. But yet, he is merciful. He's the most merciful. 
He is just to everybody. So there is beauty and majesty. يوم يقوم الروح والملائكة صفا لا يتكلمون The day that a ruh and the angels will stand forth in rows they will not speak Who is a ruh? A ruh is Sayyidina Jibreel عليه السلام How did you know that from other ayahs when he says نزل به الروح الأمين وعلى قلبي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, descended Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam, the trustworthy, brought the Quran down to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is how we know that al ruh is Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam. But why they cannot speak? Angels? Sayyidina Jibreel, لا يتكلمون. They have not committed any sins, but it's the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day, on the day of judgment, that prevents them from saying anything before him. But wait, there is the word illa. Illa means except. So no one dares to speak except those who got a permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to speak. إِلَّا مَنْ أَذِنَ لَهُ الرَّحْمَانِ What will they speak? وَقَالَ صَوَابَ And they will speak what is right. They will say the truth. Well, in dunya, they said only the truth. But what type of truth? The truth. The only truth. Normally the word sawaba means muwafaqatul haqq wal waqih. Is that life and haqq are uh, incomplete. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yaqbalu li ahad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not accept that anyone says anything, that anyone interferes or intercedes, have intercession for any other one except that his intercession is accepted. This is why no one can speak. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the permission for, for the angels, for someone to to say shafa'a, to have intercession for others, then that shafa'a, that intercession will be accepted. So, وَلَا يَشْفَعُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ So no one will have intercession except with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is actually to honor the one who is interceding. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الرُّوحُ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ صَفًّا لَا يَتَكَلَّمُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَذِنَ لَهُ الرَّحْمَنُ وَقَالَ صَوَابًا ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمُ الْحَقِّ That is the true day. That's the day that there is no doubt it's going to happen for sure. In dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a room to choose from uh, to choose from good or bad. So that someone can choose to do good. Others might choose to do bad or evil. But in Akhirah, that's the true day. Allah will say, I told you, I told you that there will be a day after. I sent you the messengers. I sent you the prophets. And I said, I told you about what will happen. I told you what will happen to the righteous people and what will happen to the uh, wrongdoers. I told you about the reward. I told you about the punishment. So you have chosen for yourselves. 
فمن شاء اتخذ الى ربه مآبا. Now that you got the information, let everyone seek a place with his Lord. The place that he will wish for himself to be in. So Allah is assuring the issue of going back to him. Resurrection after death. Reward. Punishment. Inna anzarnakum adaban qariba. So verily, we have warned you of a near torment. What what is what is the near torment? What is near? Kullu ma huwa atin qarib. Whatever, if you are promised of something, then it will happen. So if something is going to happen in the future, then no matter how far this future is, it's going to happen. It's coming. That's why we we say it's near qarib. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says كَأَنَّهُمْ يَوْمَ يَرَوْنَهَا لَمْ يَلْبَثُوا إِلَّا عَشِيَةً أَوْ ضُحَاهَا So it will be, the day of judgment will be. On the day they, when they see it, they will, say, they will think as though they had not remained in this dunya, in this world, except for an afternoon or a morning thereof. So the occurrence of the day of judgment has become close. So, the day of judgment, as Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, بُعِثْتُ أَنَا وَالسَّاعَتِكَ هَاتَيْنِ I was uh, being revealed to and the hour is so close and he got his blessed index and middle fingers close to each other and showed the uh, companions how close they are together. عذاباً قريبا. So, inna anzarnakum عذاباً قريبا. So, there will be a near torment. Another explanation for the near torment is that it might be whatever qariba is close, is near. So, and we, uh, we mentioned earlier that the day of judgment starts when the person dies. Why? Because when a person dies, then he will know where his destination will be, where his final abode will be. So it will be either uh, a hole from hellfire, his grave will be, or it will be a palace in Jannah. So the nearest of this to happen is going to be so close. So it will be closer than the day, uh, the day of judgment, but it will be witnessed as soon as the person is placed in his grave. So the day when each person will see what his or her hands have sent forth. Whoever finds good then he has to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, ha, has given him the opportunity to choose to, to do well, to choose, to choose for himself to be good. In Ali Imran, Surah Ali Imran, Ayah 30, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ تَجِدُ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ مُحْضَرًا وَمَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ سُوءٍ the day every soul will find what it has done of good present before it 
and what it has done of evil, same thing, present. It will wish that there is a great, huge distance between itself and the evil that it did in the dream. So there will be the, the uh, recognition for the idea of doing good and doing bad. The result of doing good and doing bad. But what will happen to the non-believers on that day? وَيَقُولُ الْكَافِرُ يَا لَيْتَنِي كُنْتُ تُرَابَ So the non-believers will say, Woe to me! Would I, would that I wear dust? Why dust? Why would, he, why would the non-believer wish that he wore dust? He wore dust. So he would say, I wish I wear dust. So I would not be ordered to do this or not to do that. I would not be be ordered to obey or uh, to, to choose to obey or to disobey. When he will see the punishment, he would wish that he has never been created. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be so just, even to the animals. So even the hornless sheep will be allowed to avenge itself against the sheep with horns, which did bad to it in dunya, and that uh, poor sheep could not, uh, could not defend itself. But then what will happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pass his judgment between them, and then he will say to the animals, be dust. So there will be dust. Upon witnessing this, the non-believer will say, Ya laytani kuntu turaba. Would I wear dust? So he will understand what will happen to him. He will see that there will be winners and there will be user, losers. And he will see that he is with the loser, losers group. He will see the, the result of his evil, evil actions in the dunya. Moving on to Surah Al-Nazihat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we saw how he in Surah Al-Naba talked about the day of judgment, what will happen in the day of judgment the blessings of the day of, in the day of judgment, the punishment in the day of judgment, the winners, the losers. Now, what will happen in Surah Al-Nazi'at? At the beginning, Surah Al-Nazi'at will talk about the last minutes of our life. Then we will be given examples of Yawm uh, Al-Qiyamah. Uh, we will have an example in this dunya of uh, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and his um, uh, story with Firaun. And uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remind us of his uh, power of what he has uh, created, of his signs, and of what will happen in the day after. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the surah by the word wow. Wow. This wow is called wow uh, al-qasam. The wow of swearing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to swear. And normally, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears at the beginning of the surah or wherever, he would swear with something that is so, that has so much value, that is so important. He will swear with 
الشمس الضحى الليل the sun the ضحى the dawn the night the uh, uh, the the moon the stars الفجر والفجر وليال عشر والليل إذا يغشى والشمس وضحاها so Allah swears by something that has that is so important now so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the surah as we said by something that he is swearing about and if we look at the first word we'll see والنازعات moving to the next ayah والناشطات والسابحات in the third ayah فالسابقات فالمدبرات all the words end with alif and ta so what is this alif ta at the end of the word uh the alif ta at the end of the word means the angels. It indicates that we are talking about, uh, Allah is talking about the angels. And each angel, each type of angels, they are responsible for something to happen. Clouds, rain, wind, all oh, there, there are different uh, types of uh, uh, of uh, affairs that each type is responsible for. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wal-nazi'ati gharqa. So what is this important thing that Allah is swearing? Allah is swearing here by the angels who tear out from death. Allah is swearing by the angels who are designated for removing or for pulling out, for snatching the souls of the non-believers, the souls of the losers. So how this soul is going to, uh, uh, to be snatched, to be taken away? Imagine that you have uh, some wool and there is um, a throne inside this wool so if you want to take this piece of, of throne uh, you will uh, it will be snatched it will not be taken easily and it will get some of the wool from from uh, from the sides uh, it will stick to it So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the, the non-believers did not want to leave this dunya because they already started to feel what will happen in the day after. And this is on their deathbed. So their soul is going to be snatched Snatched. It's going to be uh, removed very harshly. But how is the soul of the believer will be will be removed? The believer who loved to meet Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, who prepared himself to meet Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, who prepared himself to the day of judgment, who prepared himself to the day of reward. So how, how their soul will be removed? It's one shitati nashta. So Allah is swearing by those angels who gently pull out the souls of the believers. Each and every one is going to uh, pass through the time, through the time of ihtidar, through the seconds before dying. They will face the agonies of death. So it will be so easy 
for the people, for the people who are righteous, for the people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, uh, being pleased with. So these are the angels who descend down to earth and ascend up the skies. Their movement is as if they are sw swimming between the earth and the skies. So they are as the stars swimming in the skies uh, in their orbits. And they move in their paths. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing also by these types of angels. Now, what's the next uh, type? فَالسَّابِقَاتِ سَبْقَ So these are the angels who are racing to obey, to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are angels who are racing to fulfill the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Mudabbirati Amra. Those are the angels who conduct the affairs in accordance with Allah's commands. So these are the angels who control the events, the, the affairs from heaven to earth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by the angels. He's swearing about what? Yawma tarjufu rajifa The day when the quake shall happen. So a rajifa is the first blow. The first blow that all creatures will die. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu says, وَبِهَا تَتَزَلْزَلُ الْأَرْضُ وَالْجِبَالِ So everything will shake. This is when everybody will die. تَتْبَعُهَا الرَّادِفَةِ الرَّادِفَةِ is the second blow. So the, uh, the first, الرَّادِفَةِ, as we said, it's the quake that shall cause a violent jolt that everybody will die from. And it is followed by another jolt. Ibn Abbas again said, and, uh, So Ibn Abbas said, النفحتان, النفحتان So the two blows are the two jolts. The first one, the first blow will get everything to die, but the second blow will get everyone to live again. And that's all with the uh, permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What will happen when uh, people died? Now people are getting up. Now people uh, will be before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's that the second thing? What's that second blow? People will be as if they are drunk. They're moving here and there, but they are not drunk. But it's the, the day of judgment. Some hearts on that day shall be trembling with fear. The hearts of the non-believers shall be, shall be confused. They will be frightened. So they will be scared of what will going to happen. They look humiliated. They look disgraced from what they are witnessing. They know that what they did not believe in in dunya is going to happen now. What was it? They ask in dunya, shall we really be restored? 
to our former state? The non-believers rejected resurrection. They rejected the hereafter. They feel this is something impossible. And so they completely, the complete destruction of their bodies. What? Even after we, we are decayed bones, rejecting and disbelieving life after death? If this happens, then that would be a loss return. Mm -hmm. It will be a big loss. So inshallah, we will be stopping here and we will continue inshallah after Ramadan. Let me see, I think there was a question. How long is the day of judgment? Uh, well, subhanAllah, uh, we, we know that every day in dunya, in akhirah, is as if one day uh, is uh, 50,000 days, uh, 50,000 years of our lives. So just imagine. Everybody for uh, attending and uh, for everybody who is going to listen to the uh, lecture. So, Allahumma inna nas'aluka min khayri ma sa'alaka minhu abduka wa nabiyuka Muhammad wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa na'udhu bika min sharri ma sta'adaka minhu abduka wa nabiyuka Muhammad wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahumma inna nas'aluka min al-khayri kullihi ajilihi wa ajilihi ma alimna minhu wa ma lam na'alam wa na'udhu bika min al-sharri kullihi ajilihi wa ajilihi ma alimna minhu wa ma lam na'alam May Allah shower us with his unconditional love, with his unconditional mercy Shower us, shower our families, shower our loved ones, uh, alive or deceased. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleanse our hearts, cleanse our souls in these, in these blessed days of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the blessings of Laylatul Qadr. Just get to say and to repeat, Allahumma innaka afuwun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anna ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you for your forgiveness. We ask you for your uh, mercy. Uh, may Allah accept our fasting. May Allah accept our worship. He is the most generous. Uh, as I said, inshallah, uh, we will be continuing after Ramadan. Wasallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.